Hey there, this is Tyler from WTFX. Today we're focusing on a fairly new, well, not blur. I'll, I'll get into it, just let's dive in. That's right, it looks like there's a new option added to the blurs section of the effects panel with the release of CC 2017 called the Camera Shake de Blur. Those of you who have seen our other video on the sharpen and unsharp mask effect may remember my opinion of things that do the opposite of blurring being grouped with the blurs. They're not blurs. Not blurs. Not blurs. Not blurs. Well, that's fine. We're fine. That I'm fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? Putting my personal feelings aside for a moment, this one actually can be pretty handy. Here we have some footage that was shot through a car windshield. There are bumps and wiggles, so it naturally needs to be stabilized. Even though the warp stabilizer is a fantastic tool in After Effects, it still keeps the naturally occurring motion blur that was caused by those bumps and wiggles. This is where the camera shake to blur comes in handy. Please note that the camera shake to blur does not completely remove that heavy motion blur, but will help minimize it to give off a more natural look. Blur duration tells the plugin about how long the motion blur lasts, as well as how many frames around the blur to look out for a clean frame. Select a lower number for shorter periods of shake, and a higher number for longer periods of shake. Luckily, you have the option to keyframe this if you need to be that specific. Blur method affects how the blurred pixels are influenced by non-blurred pixels. You can choose between standard, the default, or high quality. If the motion is fairly minimal, standard should be just fine. But if they're pretty intense, then you may want to use high quality, but be aware that this will drastically slow down your render time. Strength controls how much correction is applied to the blurred frames. This defaults at 100%, but can be changed from anywhere between 0 and 200%. Be aware that higher values can result in some artifacting. Shake sensitivity determines whether After Effects considers a frame to be blurry or not, and whether it needs to be deblurred. A lower value means that it will only deblur the blurriest of frames, whereas a higher value means that it will try to remove any kind of motion blur. To get the most out of this effect, camera shake to blur should be applied after the footage has been stabilized. And for shots that are difficult to deblur, try applying multiple copies of the effect with a low strength value. As you can see from when we turn this effect on and off, it's pretty successful at trying to rebuild the cars that are parked on the street. So whether you like the camera shake to blur's ability to nope, this is stupid, it's not a blur, I... Ah, thanks for watching. I am so sorry for what you just watched. See that big red subscribe button? Definitely don't click that and don't hit the bell icon either because doing either of those will let you know when we upload new content. And you see those two clips of the other videos that we made? You don't want to check those out. I just steer clear of them. I mean, you you just watch one of our videos. That's why. In fact, what you may even want to do is, is just shut down your computer. If you live near a canal or a river, maybe even take the computer and just throw it in one of them.